Hey y'all, and welcome back to the shed. Um, today on social media page, um, on the Facebook group, uh, Renergy Power Users, um, a couple of followers there were asking about how to set the parameters in the user mode on the Renergy Rover. Um, 60 amp controller is what I have, but I believe they have like a 40 amp, and I think everything is pretty much the same within the menu. So we're going to kind of go over a few of those things and how easy it really is to set up so you can customize it to either what your battery manufacturer recommends or what you would like to do. So like in my case, you know, the battery manufacturer said, hey, why don't you set the, you know, your, um, your top voltage, your high voltage at 14.6. I went to 14.4 to make sure that I wasn't going to go over high voltage mark. I just don't want to go there. Um, batteries are expensive, why lie? But um, and when I set mine to the user mode, things worked a lot better for me on the Renogy system. Um, I'm sure that in their lithium iron phosphate mode that they have this already preset in the Rover series probably works great with the Renogy battery. Um, but you know, a good portion of us don't have Renogy batteries. They're a great battery, don't get me wrong. But we either started somewhere else and evolved into Renogy or something of that nature. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you get there in the menu, um, how you set it, and then um, what my recommended settings are for my batteries, okay? All right. Okay, so here we are at the main screen of the rover. Um, all of this information I'm going to give you, or most of it, is actually in the manual. We're just going to add in a couple of the things of what I've learned since I started picking up on do-it-yourself solar stuff. And it's really pretty straightforward. So we're going to start, you know, you, I, I usually just hit the left arrow and the light comes on. You could hit any arrow, but the left one kind of keeps everything for wh where it's at. Um, Right now, you can see I have the load on again. Um, that's for another video. We'll talk about that. I'm probably going to disconnect the load and discontinue use of it. Just, we'll explain that in another video. Okay, so we're going to go down right now. We'll pass on the load for now. And we're going to go to settings, okay? Right now, you can see I'm in the 12-volt uh, user mode. Um, I have a boost voltage of... 14.2 volts and a low voltage discharge of 12.6 volts because we're getting down there with the lithium iron phosphates at that point they really like to ride it right around 13.2 volts so at any rate once you're in the setting um, you hit the right arrow and that clicks over to battery system voltage of course i'm on a 12 volt system right now i've got four 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries um, that are in parallel, okay? So I've added up the amp hours, which you can see here. There are 200 amp hours a piece for a total of 800 amps hours, okay? So if you wanted to switch your battery voltage, say you wanted to run a 24 volt system or a 36 volt system or a 48 volt system, something of that nature, you would hit your right arrow over and this would start flashing again, okay? So from there, you could actually click up or down, it doesn't matter. Um, in the auto mode, it'll pick up whatever's going on automatically. Um, or you can go 48, 36, 24, or 12 volt, which is what I'm running, okay? So I click on over to the right button again. Um, this stops flashing, okay? And we click the arrow down and we go down to battery type, which is the mode you want to be in, okay? so. If we right arrow over, it starts to flash again. Now we can go down. So it's got the preset lithium iron phosphate mode, which is, you know, something that Renogy set up and I'm sure works great with their batteries. For my case though, because I don't use Renogy batteries at this point, I think they're a great battery, by the way. Um, I just had something else before I really got into the Renogy thing. The, I have I preset mine or set it differently, custom set it, so to speak. So we right arrow over. We go down, lithium iron, okay? Now, we can set it to like um, a gel or AGM battery. We can go to a sealed lead acid battery um, or a flooded lead acid battery, okay? And you can set the parameters up custom to whatever you want at that point. Um, 
So that way you're kind of tuning in your own system. And I think it's really important to do that actually and kind of cater to your batteries because after all, they are the source behind all the power, okay? We've already went over capacity, but you can change that. So again, your right arrow over, you can go up and down. Um, I've got 800 amp hours. We're gonna leave her right there. Um, but you can adjust all the way up to um, 9,999 9, amp hours, okay? And uh, we'll leave mine at 800 though. That'd be a lot of amp hours, holy cow. So we're gonna come over here. Now this is where the nitty gritty of the battery gets into play, okay? So basically we're gonna start up here at the, um, the first one, the over VOL DSC. It's your over voltage threshold, okay? So it will stop it from charging more than that. That's the idea anyways. It'll just like, hopefully when everything's doing well and the system's working right, it will arrest any sort of over voltage that's coming in to protect your batteries in your system. I currently have mine set at 14.4. Um, we could boost it up to 14.6. I mean, whoops, that's actually what my uh, battery uh, manufacturer recommends. So let's take it up to 14.6. It was just two arrows up and I'm into 14.6 volts. And you can set that to a range of nine to 17 volts. So right arrow to set it will come on down to a charge limit voltage, okay? So the charge limit voltage is again, um, that's how much it'll charge, you know, we could set it to 14.6, but why not just keep it in the safe zone, right? All that surface uh, charge that you get out of your lithium iron phosphates falls off rapidly. I call, I actually think it's just nothing myself. It falls off so quickly. Um, I don't even bother with it really. I actually kind of want to set that back to 14.4. Um, so we're going to... Ah, right arrow, not a left. Okay, <clears throat> but you do have a charging parameter um, of 9 to 17 volts, depending on what you're working with and what you want to do. Now, these will change. Like if you have a 48-volt system, it'll allow you a long, uh, larger range, I'm sure of that. Now, let's go down to equalized charge voltage, okay? Now, I've got my equalization charged, charging at 14.4. I don't think it's really necessary for um, the lithium iron phosphate batteries, um, potentially when they're in series to help equalize everything. But I think that when you're in the, uh, you know, the lead acid world, probably more important to bring all of those individual cells to top off. For me, I just think that if you get a full charge out of this, um, if you go, you know, a couple months without getting a full charge on your batteries because of weather or something of that nature, I recommend hooking it up to the house charger and topping those batteries off um, one, just once in a while. It works out pretty fine, okay? Whoops. I knew that was going to happen. Let's go back up. Let's go back down. Let's go user, which is where we're at. So, and again, you can adjust that um, just by hitting the right arrow, and then up and down with these arrows, and then right, out, right arrow to lock it in. So your boost voltage, okay? Um, boost voltage is good for like low batteries and stuff, or batteries that are kind of tapering down. Um, I've got mine set at 14.2, so it'll charge out at like 14.4 volts, you know, because that's where our charge limit is. That's where my batteries will read 100% according to my settings on the Rover and also the Renogy One Core. Just boom, it hits 14.4, we're golden, right? I have a boost charge voltage to where if it settles down to 14.2, it'll throw some electrons at it, kind of top it back off again. So when come nighttime, when I'm running everything, it works out pretty well. Okay, then we go down to float voltage. Okay, float voltage again, is not really necessary for a lithium iron phosphate situation. So essentially it's for kind of, it's like a trickle charger, so to speak, for your lead acid batteries. We don't really need it for uh, lithium iron phosphate. The boost is kind of filling in for that. Um, so I basically got mine set at 13.2, which is where it likes to rest. And I've been fine with that with absolutely no problems. Anybody has a better recommendation, 
I'm always up for recommendations. I'm always up for learning new things. So um, please let me know. Now, the next one is the boost charging recovery voltage, okay? I've got mine set at 14.4. Um, I'm not even sure why, to be honest with you, but that's where it's set up at. <laughs> I'll have to look into that. I'll get back to you guys on that. I had a reason for setting it there and I absolutely don't remember what it is now. Um, but you know, that's the way it goes. Okay, so we come down here and for a low voltage, um, um, it's got a, a recovery. So the REV is for your recovery voltage. Okay, and this is a um, an over discharge recovery voltage okay so if you bring your batteries down too low then you know it'll help recover it right now i got mine set at 10.5 i could go down to 10.0 that's where my bms shuts off but i have no intention on ever bringing these batteries that low i can promise you that and then we have at the last we've got the um under voltage warning i've got mine set at 12 volts because once you hit 12 volts your batteries are pretty low. You're getting into the 10% category at that point. You know, it's like it's time that you need to shut everything down and protect the batteries a little bit. Um, so that way you're not getting into trouble with it. So low voltage disconnect. I've got mine set at 12.6 volts. That is kind of where, you know, some of my other apparatus I shut off at. So I just shut everything off at 12.6. And again, you can adjust that up and down. Um, my batteries rarely go down below 50% for what I'm using them for right now. So the fact of the matter is, is that I feel good with 12.6 volts, why lie? So low voltage, well, come on now. Low voltage disconnect delay. So if you're like powering on a heavy load and it's drawing too much out of the batteries right off the bat before it mellows out, it's nice to have a little bit of a buffer there. Um, that's what this low voltage delay is. Mine, I got to set it five seconds before something happens. You could go a little bit more, but um, right now if I'm running that much power out of my batteries, I better check and see what I'm running. Something's going awfully wrong at that point and I got bigger problems. So um, when it does equalize, I got mine set for 120 minutes and for boost time, I got it set for 10 minutes basically, okay? So, and then we've got intervals at zero days. See, I don't even have mine on equalization. There's zero day in, uh, we got zero days on the uh, intervals and then Temperature compensation. I just left that at whatever Renogy had it at. That's for a lead acid type scenario. Um, something we don't need to worry about. I actually used my temperature probe off of the Rover 60 here to um, just have the temperature really on my bus bar of my batteries. I kind of track everything that way. Um, these are the ones that you really need to think about. These five, four here. And these four here, these are going to be your actual battery settings, okay? Anyways, folks, um, that's about it for that. We'll cover more on the Renogy menu down the line. And, uh, yeah. Okay, um, this will be the, the end of the battery settings video here. Okay, folks, so... There you have it. Um, that's where I have my battery uh, settings at. Um, if anybody has any, you know, critique about it or thinks I should do something different, you know, please speak up in the comments. I'm all for it. I'm all for learning about new things. Um, I'm not a perfect individual by any means. Um, you know, just, just like Renogy and their tech, they're, they're not perfect either, but I think they're pretty good and I think they're sincere about things. Um, at any rate, um, I got most of those settings from EcoWorthy, who's the manufacturer of my batteries, and it's been working really well. Um, when I first bought the Rover, I went off the preset, and it wasn't working well for the batteries that I had, and um, we won't get into that right now. That's a whole other scenario, but using the user settings is key, I think, and it caters to the batteries and it caters to your system. It makes things a lot safer, 
a lot easier to use. Um, again, this this uh, this system's been pretty good to me, and I think that you know eventually I'm going to grow out of this. I have grown out of it already, and this is going to be used in another scenario. I'll be taking you guys through that um, for an outdoor kitchen, and then. The shed's going to change. We're bringing in something a lot bigger because I'm powering more things with it and I'm kind of finding the limitations of the Rover right now. Um, we're on the fence about what I'm going to use. Um, there's several things I'm looking at right now that have, you know, 5,000 watts of capability, I'll put it that way, going to a 48 volt system. So stay tuned for that. Um, I hope you guys learned something from the video. I, I certainly did. And I hope that there, you know, some critique in the comments to help me learn more about what's going on. Um, I am still fairly new to this game. And although I've learned a lot over the last, you know, however many months, there's a lot more to learn. And I appreciate any help I can get. Thanks, guys. And thanks for checking in.